welcome to this video and in this video I'll be showing you how you can build a payment subscription platform on the seller blockchain on this payment subscription platform you can charge your users CUSD directly and once you subscribe to your plan monthly that is charged from their wallet and in order to build this we are going to be making use of seller composer to do this and for those that don't know what seller composer is um, seller composer allows you to quickly build and deploy and iterate on decentralized application on the cello blockchain um, for example to get more understanding if you are just moving into web3 development you're coming for web2 cello composer will be so fantastic for you and that's because it comes packaged with all of like the scaffolds that you've been needing um, for developments depending on your background for angular developers flutter developers React developers, React Native, uh, without Expo, React Native app, it comes with that. And then you have frameworks such as ADAT for smart contract development and Truffle, you have it here, and Subgraph for, for indexing of data, you have it all per package. While setting up Seller Composer, you don't have to use all of this, you just have to choose what you want to do, what you want to use for your development, which you would say soon. Um, and also, I'm making use of OpenSAP Defender, which is a fantastic tool also. Uh, we're going to be making use of the admin, the relay, and the auto task. What the admin simply helps us with is help us um, import our smart contract such that we can interact with you know, the contract method from right here. And other things that helps us also do is that if you are in a case where we need to set up multi-sig wallet, you know, to perform an action, it has to go through to to step verification, all of that can be done through the admin. And then there's the relay. The OpenZap Relay helps us um, interact with methods right here um, via HTTP so that we can have like a private key for interacting with a smart contract set up in one place and we don't have to worry about all of those things. Relay generates, you know, a wallet for us that we can fund, that can perform all of our actions. So you would see soon all of these things are tied into each other. And AutoTax um, is... Um, a tool that helps us trigger action on our smart contract periodically, you know, depending on how we want to do it. You can also set up cron jobs on how you want action to be called. So you'd see, we can use, for example, this is charge subscription. We be able to run this, um, this particular time every 43,200 minutes. And guess what? It's going to link to our relayer, which our relayer again, has access to our smart contract through the admin here after we deploy our smart contract and transfer the ownership to the relayer such that Autotask can use our relayer to periodically call our smart contract and automatically charge our customers subscription fee every month. All right. Um, using Seller Composer, this is going to be made possible. We are going to be using the React um, app of uh, React part of Seller Composer. We're going to set up with React app and the subgraph. Um, as I've mentioned, subgraph just to index our data on the blockchain such that it's possible to be able to query things like who has paid this month, who has not paid this month, uh, all of those information. We're going to, you know, link it to, to subgraph. So come along as I show you how you are going to achieve this using Celo Composer. The next thing that we have to do is to install Celo Composer and this is set up our development environment so in order to do that the first thing to do um, right here is to install cello composer globally using npm and in order to do that you just need to run npm install at cello cello composer globally all right i've i already have that done so i will simply just open my terminal and the next thing is to create a new cello composer project so next thing is to run npx and I need to seed into my development environment and let's put that in blockchain. All right, good. So npx cello composer create. I would choose React because we are using React here. And next, I would use React Cello. React.
For my smart contracts, I would make use of Varax, prefer Varax, and this this to shuffle, and then create subgraph. Yes, we need subgraph. Project name, what should we call it? Let's say, you know, uh, a book. Hmm. Let's say an uh, ebook. Then a subscription platform. Yes, that's it. To take less than a minute to set up. Oh, yeah, that's it. That, that was fast. So now we have all of this set up. Let me open this up in my VS Code. Code. No. C. My ebook. No. I'm going to do code this. All right. Let me bring this to view. As you can see right now, we have here yeah, in our package, we have Adax, we have React Tab, we have so grabs. All of these right here have been included and that's really all we need um, to be honest. So right now, let's just do npm install. And if you check the package of JSON, you'll see all of this has been set up. We have scripts in order to do things easily like add a test, React Dev. But first, let's use yarn to install all of the dependencies. So let's do yarn. I uh, will pause the video a bit while all of this is running and then we'll come back to this. Next, now that we have our packages installed using Yarn, let us fire up our app and see how it looks like by default. Um, in order to do that, there is already like the upper script to run that here, and it is React App Dev. So let's do yarn run React App Dev. It's going to, and just so you know, the default that we have for the React App is um, next year's. So it's it's not like the basic. We ask our food, so next year is like really easy to use. So, yeah, so here you go. This is like the default canvas for building using Cello Composer by selecting React app. Now, you would see that the basic things, such as connect right here, has been included. And as much as this might look trivial, it is something really, really not simple to just like do so it helps you come with that by default um and just to show you where that's been done you would see right here in here you, we are using cello provider which wraps all of this thing for us it means that inside any of our pages and components we can have access to things such as um, the address that is currently connected we can you know um, let me show you that if I come right here to error, you would see right here there is this connector is connected is the address. Um, and this is made possible by this package called React Cello. Um, just to show you what React Cello is. React Cello. Yeah, you would see. You see React Cello. Easiest way to access Cello in your React application, um, you have React Hook, all of these things um, sort of like um, included. I mean, you can connect your DAP to other wallets easily using re React Cello, right? And then also by default, there is the um, contract key also like included with the React Cello, um, the React app package for Cello Composer. So it makes it really awesome for for development purposes. Um, not to move um, real on track too much, let's get back to this. So what we want to do first is try to make, you know, all of this plan, make this cut for all of this plan and also achieve this. This was built with the old Cello Composer. That's why it looks <laughs> a bit ugly here. I mean, but since I've worked on this, Cello Composer has been updated with the coolest UI. So 
forgive my old UI here, but we are going to use like, you know, the new cool UI. So we are trying to achieve this. And how to make this easy, I just created a card on the, um, GitHub, I have a gist, with, which I'm going to like include, I'm going to include this URL in this video, just so we don't waste, waste so much time trying to write all of this out. It's just, it's just the card I mean. So let's copy this. Open back our editor. Let's create a component. Let's call it payment card. Payment card. Yes. All right. And import yes. from your app. I mean, if you see my editor suggesting a lot of stuff, that's because I have GitHub Copilot installed which is really, really cool. <laughs> it's a paid, it's a paid tool that auto generates all of this stuff for me. Really, really cool, I tell you. So let's do the turn. All right. And for our payment card, we want to accept the plan name and also the price. Uh, we don't need the features. We don't need that. Right, plan name and the price. And right here, we can take um, the price. All right, and also, let's see, one developer, all of these get started. Plan name, we can just do plan name here. Hmm. All right, so in our index page right here, we are going to have to include this. Let's put this here. Let's let's import payment card. Payment card. Yeah, and payment card needs to have what plan name? Let's call this basic. And for the price, let's say. Uh, to see USD. All right, so let's import this in. This is going for the import. Ah, yeah, of course. So import plan payments plan. plan. Yep, payment plan. And why is that component? Import payment was doing plan components and payments plan. No, what's it saying here? It says payment plan is declined, but this value is never used. Well, that's because it's called payment card, payment plan. Again, what's it saying? Cannot find what the component payment plan. Uh, let's put default payment card. Why am I making this silly mistake? Payment plan, the payment card, all those mix up. Payment. All right. I think everything works just fine now. Uh, let's go back to this guy. Oh, yeah, cool. We have this here. So now we need three payment plan, right? Yeah. Um, 2CUSD, one basic premium and enterprise, 2, 5, and 12. All right, so let's do that. So right here, first, in order to make this easy, let's do class name, a space, space Y, it's LG grid, LG, Read column three. Uh, let's see. So let's duplicate this right now. Let's wrap this in a flex. I mean, I don't need this. Class name. And let's 
integer squared is three times c or the come of it oh. <laughs> oh what is wrong we have to reduce that a bit so we say basic premium enterprise let's see Let's reduce this a bit. Space Y up here. Um, I think it'll be X. Let's leave this like this. But let's add extra classes. Let's do SM. Gap 6 and FL. Gap 10, LG, space, Y0. Let's see how it looks right now. Well, yeah, but this is way, way better. <laughs> so we have this at our basic premium and enterprise plan. And let's try this out. Connect wallets, MetaMask. Right, disconnect. Well, the only difference right now we have here, let me bring the screen like this. It shows us the network that we are on. It shows this, um, which is the address that is currently connected to it, and the disconnect. But for this, we really have the disconnect. So next, let's make that happen. Now that we have our cards all set up here, we should be able to click on Get Started. Once click on Get Started on any of these plan, it's going to, you know, call our smart contracts which we are going to write shortly and then um, whenever we come back to this page it's going to show the plan that we are on you know instead of showing get started to show you like things like um let's see um active plan something like that all right but two additional things i want us to do is i want us to be able to show the network that we are connected to and the current address that is connected that that really makes sense so open up this back come to the editor um, you see right here we have this connect which is what we're seeing right now but initially we have connect so let's duplicate this button and see uh, we want to show our address here right we have that here instead of this connect our click wouldn't do anything what we want to show is the network that we are connected to network that we are on uh, in order to get that we can pick that up from right here network network and what's happening network is also a bit type we are to node what is that network dot name yeah Okay, yeah, that's it. Okay, let's go back here. Now we have Alpha Juris and oh, let's see. Now we also want to show the address. All right, we have network showing, but we also want to show the address. So let's do this again. Let's just do. Margin right to does that suit our purpose? Mm, not bad, it works. And next, let us just add another one. But instead of network, we want to do address. Okay, now we have the network showing, we have this showing, and we have this connect. But it's just so much too big. So let's truncate this. Maybe show like the first four or five or and then the last four or five um, let's try it out and see how it goes so now to do that again let's not forget some margin right to let's create a function that says can just do that right here constant um, truncate address i mean this was maybe old Oh God, I love, <laughs> I love 
you know copilot so much i mean just a method of the of this for us right um zero six i'm going to slice these last four let's see let's see how this turns out this turns out so let's call truncate on this we want to truncate the address and let's see how this turns out oh yeah this is good <laughs> this is really really good um yeah, we don't have any on click on this no click on this and then disconnect so let's test this out again it says and why do we not have margin y2 oh no it's because the space is not there yeah disconnects connects choose wallets and then yeah that's it awesome so now that we have this um before we can click on this to test this all out uh, the first thing i want us to do right now is to or the next thing i want us to do right now is to write a smart contract that would do all of this so write a smart contract that would that's going to that the user would be interacting with to subscribe and after doing that we are going to write a test for our smart contracts and after writing the test for our smart contracts um we are going to um, import sort of a smart contract to open the plane see how everything turns out then the last thing we'll do eventually is to use the ui to interact with it so next let us write up a smart contract so open back your editor once you open this back, we are going to be doing what next. Let us see the accounts that is currently set up. To do that, let's run yarn yarn add as accounts. All right, so we don't have any accounts currently in set up with our ad bags we need like a deployer wallet to be able to run all of this and yeah we'd see there's one here config file config file complaining for network or whatever let's open that up and see uh, what's up here it is lookouts alpha jurors here you'd see it's re referencing process in the private key which we do not currently have set up so first change is from the EMV example to the EMV. Alright, and to sort this out, we need to get a loose kind of VI key and private key. Up. I would use my private key that I have set up right here. Now, this is publicly known private key, so I advise not to use it for anything live, but I'm sure there will be some test talking here, and I've used it. I use it for my projects for, you know, when it comes to tutorials and stuff. So, it's easy to just like use and I'm sure there'll be some fund in there. So private key will do this and next. Uh-huh. Let us find out what the public address is. Run this again, yeah, now that's accounts. Now this is the address right here. This will be a deployer address and spots because we are going to be testing our smart contracts locally using adats you know other chain like you know locally and then we're going to deploy smart contracts and verify it and we're going to use this account to do so so let's see if this account has some funding in it we can check that on celluscan .io. we need to switch to alpha jurors testnet let's check that all right yeah so um, wow someone to use it one day ago wow let's see yes yeah, some of these right here and we can also use cello for set in case it's empty to you know get some stuff but we don't we don't need it so yeah we can let it go let me close this off So now that we have that and we do not need any funds, we do not need to go sell those kind of VIP. Let us remove all the things that we do not need. We don't need this, 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 this. All of this, we don't need them. Let's delete them off. Now in our deploy, we have deploy GS that includes all of this stuff that we do not need. Cool. 
Ale ja z komedii sa otwory po pół sobie zimy zwykałem, bo hmm, wiedziałem nic. Ja jeszcze. Um, sample script. No, no, we do not have this. We don't need any of this for Lester's comedy, so don't. We can find this when for them later, so. Alright. And let's create our smart contracts by calling it new file. Let's call it payment subscription. Just so. Yeah, that works. Contract, yeah. Payment subscription. Alright, now in order to proceed, there are a few things that we need to, to include, that we need to use. Um, we want to use OpenZapier library in order to get some things going. Um, for example, in our contract, we need things such as um, possible um, contracts. We need for us to be able to pause our subscription. I mean, you expect if this is like um, a contract that you launch, you know, for security purposes, usually I like to use the possible contract. So it gives me the flexibility that I can pause my smart contract anytime there's, if, any, if anything goes out of hand, and then we use the ownable contract helper also and you know the IAS 20 contract helper and as I start we are going to sort of um, deploy our own CUSD token I mean we can use CUSD token to run this but while running our test we don't want to be using like real CUSD to run through our test right even though we're in testnet we don't have a lot of that in our wallet just just a few of that so um, even for testing purposes we're just going to do some small CUSD token of our own in order to be able to get along just fine um, let me go back to terminal for that purpose let's install open zapping library so come here let's search for open zapping contract all right contracts right here I mean, we are going to also make use of this wizard. Um, we can as well just do that right away for us to generate a smart contract for the token, uh, which is nothing hard. Let's just do CUSD in the name of our token, right? Um, let's just say settle. Let's call it settle CUSD. CUSD. Uh, let's print what? 1,000 of that. Right, and this mean table. I like to do that. We don't need any of this. Nothing fancy. We really just um, need this. Um, let's just copy this. The SPDS license thing and sim. Um, mock CUSD. All right. Yeah, it's fine. CUSD. All right. So next, let's just go ahead and install the OpenZapli contract itself. Let's see that dot right here. Let's just click and install this. Run install. I have to run that from where? From so run install. See, I'm running out from inside this package, which is the other package. Um, that's where we need it. So I need this. All right. So we have OpenZapli in store right now. So uh, what's the company again? On the select keyword identifier. Um, that's because I didn't put the store there. 
All right. Found no font. We're going to fix this later. So first, like I said, for subscription, we need to import ILC20. And just for that purpose, let's just call it Mouth Pro. Let's use a much more stable version. Let's just stick to 8.0. Let's see 4.0. Yeah. And we need possible and we need ownable. So let's see. For security, that's what it is. Possible to import it to have to do this, and that's it. And we need Onable. <laughs> oh, I love, I love how this suggests this for me. So, payment subscription is what? Possible and use Onable. Another thing I also like to do is try to import the Adat console such that I'm able to console once in a while and that's open my debugging. So import that console, yeah. So I can do things like, you know, console log and all of that. One thing I also want to get rid of is this and this and this. Um, let me delete that off. Filter test, yeah, move to trash. Okay, now let's see if I can compile a smart contract. So instead of that, let's do add as compile. Forgot contract, payment association on right time. All right. Okay, compile successfully. Now let's get into writing our smart contract. So. First thing first is we want to define our plans, right? As an enum. So our available, available plans. So let's do enum plan. <laughs> Again, this guy is just Dr. Cooper is suggesting everything for me. Plan for instead, yeah, basic premium enterprise. Wow. Yeah, and then for each plan, we need to have like a plan detail, which again, let's make this a struct subscription. <laughs> I'm guessing maybe because I've written this code before, then it's suggesting most of it for me. Huh? But I'll take advantage of that. So I tap everything again. So uh, the first thing we, we have here is like a plan, like we have a subscription. Uh, subscription will have a plan, right? And there is the price, there is the start date, there's the end date, and is the subscription active or not? So we have like three plans. You have the basic premium or enterprise, right? So if a customer subscribe or user subscribe, what plan do they subscribe to? This is the plan. And the reason why I'm not making this a string is because of course we don't want to by mistake from the front end pass a plan that doesn't exist. Imagine typing basic without the A if it was a string. Uh, but this helps us take care of that. All right. And let's create another struct. What can we call that? Let's let's call it plan detail. And our plan detail, we have our plan, um, the price, and the duration. All right. So let's start. Plan detail. So we're able to say, oh, um, this is the details of our basic plan. This is the detail of our... This is the price of our basic plan. This is the duration of our basic plan. All right. So we can say basic plan is one month, premium plan is two months. We can do all of that. So let's just call it struct plan detail, detail of each of our plan. And then it's going to have the name of the plan, plan. All right. And then we have the price. And next we have the duration. Yep. So for all of our plans, let's create a mapping for all of our plans that will be created. So let's say 
nothing. It wants to be a plan, so a plan detail. Plan detail. And then it's going to be public and call it plans. All right, so we say all plans over here. And then let's say all subscription. Good. That's nice. Address to the subscription and subscription. So address is who is subscribing and the subscription they subscribe to. So yeah, good. So let's say active subscriptions. Also active subscriptions. address well so why we are having both social and association is social note all of the subscription right and then this says if a subscription is active or not all right so we can say if someone has just added subscription or not like a user right this old lot of subscription but we can say oh um, does this does this user have a subscription we can easily just check you know because if we just limit it to this, it means if we want to check if someone has that subscription or not, we have to kind of like loop through and check maybe like a few this inside here that says, you know, active or not. But here we can just know if the user is active and if the user is not act if no more active, we just remove it from here. So it makes it just straightforward to check. Um, so next thing, let's create an event. Why, is, why does it keep suggesting token use token event? Uh, okay so let's create an event and say event that is fired such as it says you know plan created because we are not going to have the you know the plans all loaded and everything we just say plan created and this is like a good generation we have the plan which this is zero one two as you all know and it's going to be price and duration so plan is created yes and let's also do other plans you know such as events to emit when this subscription is created let's see is this a good default and the address of the subscriber and the plan ah, do I need all of these such as the price the end dates no let's just stick to this Events, subscription, cancelled, address of the subscriber. I mean, we can always get the plan. So let's index this. Index this also. Event subscription is charged. So let's see. Subscriber index, but we don't need this. Let's just say the plan. Plan that the user was charged for, and you know, the next time the user will be charged. Next charge. Okay. Next charge. At the back of my mind, what I'm thinking is the reason why I have this event is I'm thinking when we connect this to subgraph, how would how would someone be querying those details like if it wants to be displayed say on some other you know place how would this be be displayed and of course let us set the token that will be used and 
WordPress, public, what token will be used to, you know, to be paid for subscription. So subscription token. In our case, of course, we are going to be using CUST, but again, we generated our own, you know, mock CUST to be able to use when we write our test. And when we deploy our smart contracts, we can change that. We should write the method, it will pass to our constructor anyway, and we can write another method too. Another function to be able to change this. So let's see, token yield from subscription payment. Mm, payment payments. So for our constructor address, we're taking what? Oh God, this is buggy. Subscription token and <laughs> let's see this generated. So we say subscription token, subscription token, um, all right. And we are going to say, no, we don't. Mm. This is not needed. Plan basic, plan details, 30 days. For our plan details, what's in there, the price of our plan. So by default, once we deploy a smart I want to create like, you know, default plans. So we still are basic. I remember we said it's going to be two CUSD. So in this case, let's just make it two exponential. 18. This is going to be what? Five exponential 18. And this is going to be 12 exponential 18. Yep. Also, let us require that. Subscription token is not, you know, an invalid address. Yep. 12, exponential 18. So right here, we say like our plan length is every 30 days. That's what we expect. But for the purpose of this, I mean, once, once this is done, all right, I'm thinking maybe we should reduce this into something like, let's see, say one, one hours. And that's because once we want to test on live, it's easier for us. We don't have to wait, what, 30 days to test this, right? Um, so that when you know we are testing live, we are able to just say, oh, after one hour, we would wait for our subscription to run again. I mean, this is going to be automated, so we are able to wait for every one, one, one hour extra, you know. I mean, if you don't want to wait this long, you can even make it 30 minutes, one minute. It's easier like that, you know. Um, so let's just do one hour. On the contrary, I might want to reduce this. One hour is and one hour. So let's just emit plan created, plan basic, two exponential 18, one hours. Yeah, plan created, premium, plan created. Now, all of these are auto generating for me is done by this copilot, right? GitHub copilot. And let me just show you again. I mean, I've mentioned that a couple of times here, but um, GitHub copilot. All right. Cloud BS VI Intelligence, it's an AI tool that kind of helps me with my code stuff. So you can write things that I've written before or things that someone else have written or things. I mean, it's really, really awesome. So back on track here. So right here. It says if subscription token is, if your subscription token address is not invalid, create that. Create all the three plans, right? Emit that the plans have been created and that is that. All right. There's nothing we want to do here anymore. So the next function I would think we should write is uh, just like this guy is suggesting. Uh, we should write something that says um, subscribe. All right. 
where that's what a user will call if you want to subscribe to um, like a plan okay so yep let's see let's write our function subscribe um, even subscribe to like a plan and how long do you want to subscribe for the plan i mean how long like duration do you want to subscribe for it like 12 months one year two months but in this case since i'll make it like in a multiple of hours so it's easier so viewings it's like one hour two hour three hours something like that duration and if it's you know in this case months you can say one month two months three months right so basically i'm thinking this in the case of months right i'm just using hours here so it's easier for us to test manually later all right we don't have to wait for 30 days in order to see how this works how it turns out so this is a public function that can be called when the contract is not paused when not paused I don't want to just tab and allow what copilot is suggesting because i mean so it's easier for us to understand all of this here so first let's require let's be sure that all plans the plan here Plan the plans, plans the plan. Now, remember that each of our plan here has a plan detail, and by default, what Solidity will do is like you know put the default right here. I mean, for price here to be zero, for division here is zero. We are trying to assess something that doesn't exist, basically. So yeah, we can just use that to check that by saying plans the plan dot price. Is greater than one all right because i mean the prices that we have right here are all two five and so so yeah so if it's not greater than one that means you know you're an invalid plan it's not part of our plan right the plan doesn't exist basically right we don't want to be doing things like uh plan we can also do a lot of like if and else thing by saying checking if the plan if the plan is basic if it's zero is basic if it's one it's and that's another thing basically um, we can only have zero one two so we can simply say that if it's not zero if it's not one if it's not two then it's not part of our plan we can say if plan here all right is greater than two then it's not part of our plan that should work but this solves the problem so either of these could work as I've said, we can say plan here must be less or equal to two because we have zero, one, two. All right, so let's use that. That looks more cleaner to me. Let's use that again. Also, why it is. Okay, of course, durations must be greater than zero. And again, in the case of the fact that we don't want the plan to be more than 12 months, we can say, oh yeah, and in our case, 12 hours, all right? We can say, okay, we can check that the duration must be less or equal to 12. So 12 hours in our case, we're just thinking of this in 12 subs, 12, consecutive subscription you know so and then let's check that the user doesn't have any active subscription oh cool all right so in this case that's the social message or sender user doesn't have any association so yeah that's it so now in this case for this user to be able to subscribe to this plan it means this user must have given a smart contract the allowance of 
the amount needed for that subscription plan. All right, and when the user is given a smart contract from their wallet, yeah, the 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 allowance able to spend that that amount, then we would be able to move forward. So the case is this: if the user is trying to subscribe to a basic plan right here, the basic plan right here costs two USD. So it means if the person wants to subscribe for twelve months, it has to be two times 12. 12, 12 consecutive, <laughs> twelve consecutive plans. That's two times twelve. That's twenty-four. So it means that the user must have given us that amount of allowance. So let's check that. Let's say okay. Right here, in two five six, the required allowance to be able to allowance to be able to pursue this plan is plans to plan that is required times duration. That's the required allowance that is needed. All right, so we have to check the require. Hmm. This guy is off to my level. This one we have to require that IELC 20, which we are importing right here. The in that's the interface of ELC 20. The subscription token that we're using dot allowance message your sender address. This it means this message your sender is allowing our smart contracts to be able to spend this required allowance. So if the required allowance is not greater or equal to the required amount, then Insufficient allowance through that. So let's let's just add a comment here that says check if the user has approved the contract to spend required amount. Right. If not, reverse. I meant to say reverse. Yep. Peter Copilot again to the rescue. So again, we also want to check that. The balance of this user currently, currently the balance of this user at least is able to pay for the first subscription i mean right now the user have allowed us to be able to spend all of the amounts for the duration of the subscription but also we also need to charge them for the first subscription during the subscribe all right just like you are trying to subscribe on a platform using Stripe, they charge you for the first one and then tell you to the state and all of those. So now we need to require that. So require I ELC 20 subscription. Dot balance balance of messy or sender is greater than plans John. Sometimes kid occupiers also make me lazy. So yeah, we are saying, okay, what is the balance of this message you send out for this subscription token? Um, I hope it is greater than, you know, the f the price of this plan, because we have to charge the person in this case. All right. So check that we can. Start for the first month, right? Let's just put it that way, even though it's not month that I'm using this way, you know. So now let's create a subscription. So in this case, let's say subscription, subscriptions, and let's use your sender. Right, this is subscription plan that is created. I prefer to use like this old thing. This is much more right like this. I prefer this. Again, <laughs> it suggested it for me. See, so plan is this plan. All right. Uh, for subscription, what are we taking? Plan, price, start date, end date. Yep. 
plan price price that is block dot time and it's block dot time plus the plan duration to plan no 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 yeah plan dot duration times duration yeah yeah that's it um do i have active right here plan yeah it's active all right um it's not like i need it but then yes it is that's it start to finish charge All right, so the next thing now is we have to charge the user. We don't have this charge method just waiting yet. And we have to add this guy to at his subscription. And we have to emit subscription created. So let's create our function for, no, don't get ahead of yourself, charge, which takes, internal it's going to be internal require nope let me just take it slowly let me think about how i want to create our charge hmm. so we need an internal function charge here because you know we need to create another function that is going to be public um, um public will we only be able to be called by the relay from open zaplane such as you know the relay would um, the auto task would use Open graph and um, subgraph to query. We are going to write a script that we upload on in our auto, in Open Zapier auto tags to query details such as you know the plans that are available to be charged and the relay would call the charge function, not the internal charge, but just now charge. So now. We don't need to pass extra details to charge because we just to pass the um, message you're saying that because we already created the plan right here so we can get that from inside charge so let's see address subscriber subscribe subscriber is going to be internal and right here so <laughs> copilot see you're tempting evil I will type this out. Require again. Now we are doing transfer from, and I'll show you something now. Oh yeah, so twenty. Transfer from. So I has twenty transfer from subscriber to this contract and this amount, which is the amount of our plan. Uh, so that's the. Uh, we could just say sufficient subscriber and plan. Is that included? Yeah, the prices. We are putting the price in here, so that's okay. But yeah, yeah, that's okay. I mean, um, but the fancy part is, what if, what if in the future we change the the price of this plan for some reason? So using this might not be okay. But of course, the person already subscribed to that plan, so uh, let's just let's just simply stick to that. That works. Let's simply stick to that. Instead of passing plan, subscriber plan, yeah, let's stick to that, that works. And let's see, transfer from, uh, let's come back to you. Interfaces, yeah, so 20, transfer from, oh, let's transfer from, let's see. 
Transform from Riton's bull. That's what I'm trying to find out here. Riton's bull. So if it's false, it means it did not work. Yeah, so required. Yeah, so this is fine. This statement is okay. Yeah, transfer field. So to be successful, we need to do the next charge, right? Like, you know. Let's see. Subscriptions. Subscriber. Subscriber the next charge equals dot dot timestamp right now plus the duration of the plan right that's the next charge so set next charge dates and in our case time also let's confirm that all uh, well, subscription charge, let's any that event subscriber and the plan and then the next charge. But then we also have to say, okay, what if there is no next charge, right? You have to subscribe to user. What if the subscription, subscription, subscriber, next charge is greater than subscription subscriber in dates? Yeah, this is it. So subscription subscriber next charge greater than subscription subscriber and date. Let's see. Come on. Let's see. Let's it's false, but instead let's just say okay. If it's that case, just cancel. Cancel. I don't know if you know how to spell cancel subscriber. So it means that we have to write cancel. So for cancel, I can cancel. Let me see if this is golden. <laughs> Let's see if this is what it says. Because of course, do I want to have cancel like differently? Or why do you have an average at the internal? So cancel is saying that again. Sub subscriber subscriber and go to the next one. Subscription subscriber until this false and then delete until subscription. Just delete the subscription basically. We don't want it. Delete subscription and say active subscription subscriber is false. Yes, and we need subscription cancelled. But of course, if we don't want. I mean, we could have, we could just create like a normal cancel uh, method, but then I don't think we really do need to do that. So such that the relayer can call cancel. Say, for example, a customer requests that, oh, I don't want my subscription to run again. I don't want to charge me again. Like you cancel, then you can just create that one. Um, I guess you can just simply just do that. But I am not doing that. Just simply set this person subscription to false. And then delete this subscription and you know what am I doing here? And then emit subscription cancelled. Yeah, I think we are we are good like that. So we say charge here, yeah, charge goes to require this subscription and if this is this subscription is charge greater than this, then cancel yep i need subscription charge and cancel all right here we have subscribe we have 
So we have to create like the charge, you know, the normal charge. So let's, let's just put that up here. Hold on here. Look at this. Function charge the subscriber. I don't know if this is right but let's see only owner which is really i can call this and this can be called when not false so what's this guy saying saying require that a person has an active, an active subscription if not say not subscribe then require that the next charge is less than blocking the app not you don't get time to charge yeah <laughs> this is really really fantastic what ecom copilot is doing like cutting my code typing by but of course sometimes i'm really very careful about what this type because sometimes you would think it's really accurate but it's not because yeah you get carried away by how github copilot is suggesting stuff for you so now that i have to ch charge i have to see that you know um i still have allowance of course so let's require that i have allowance because of course we check why the user is subscribing up if we have allowance but of course the user could have you know revoke allowance from that time up to now so let's see um, I am allowance of uh, no, there's allowance I must check for. So I am saying TNT. To be honest, to be fair enough, we can easily just call charge here and not check allowance because then it will complain from there, right? Um, but let's just put this all for fanciness, right? But if you are writing for for a and want to deploy, you want to reduce the number of code. This easily couldn't be removed off. This me checking for the allowance because right here, when it's doing from transfer from, let's see how transfer from works. Um, it's when it's doing transfer from right here, um, you found out that it's basically move to move amongst token from to using allowance mechanism. It would already be checking for the allowance there, like already be checking for the allowance. So this allowance we are checking is just like some double check that is no needed to be honest, right? But I just want to put it there, just you know, just fastness. Or if we're going to deploy to live, this can be removed, of course. Of course, um, it's just making our code base just much more. But let's go ahead and say subscription token. dot allowance yeah. so allowance let's see sender address this subscription token subscription subscriber dot price would we'll see that okay is sufficient allowance so yep that's it and then we we'll charge subscriber so that that should work um what else we already have cancel charge and we have charge here and then we have subscribe so we're good to go on this point so i think the last thing is of course with all these subscription being charged and everything we want to be able to take our money out eventually right we don't want the case whereby we cannot take our money out like people pay us with a, a to particular token and of course we want to be able to take the token out right so we can just say function uh, withdraw withdraw sub subscription subscription token to a month's public owner in this case I would not have modifier when not post because it could be that the smart contract is in jeopardy we want to post smart contract and then withdraw our money out and deploy a new one of course so yeah so require rs20 so we should talking about transfer to a month all right transfer field we can transfer now not all smart contracts if you are not a deployer of this you have to confirm that the rs20 token returns boolean because some people just implement their smart contract and not return boolean so i think we have all our smart contract written out now we have everything all in place we write test for a smart contract now and after writing test for a smart contract if, well, during the process of writing for a smart contract if anything is missing we're able to sort of like chip it in 
So next step let's write the test pass smart contracts. But before we do that, let's see if this will compile. Let's see, is it going to compile through an error? Yep, there's an error. 101. And is this the error? Let me make sure that's it. Uh, 100. On, did you mean subscribe or subscribe? On declare and reply, did you mean subscribe or subscribe? Um, what is wrong here? So, how do I declare and reply? Or something? Operator not compatible with type and name. And let's let me stop this first before even going back. Um, so on the grand file, did you mean subscriber or subscribe? Subscriber, yeah, yep. Council click subscriber. What did I do over here? All right, I spelled it wrongly. The way this messes up for me sometimes, right? Subscriber. Then let me look at this other one again. That says Plan D is sixty four. That's because it can convert this to this. You have to coerce it back to an insanity generate. Right, and this is uh, 75. <sighs> Balana, oh gosh. Balance of. Seven. Where are they up there? So it's not really nice charge, no phone, but no visible argument. What's that? Twenty seven. Substitution subscriber. When it comes to charge. Substitution and substitution says that this and this. Why does it not have nice charge? Charge. Okay. Only seventy eight. Wrong arguments come for okay. Hmm. Because I mean. Right here, I'm already updating the next chart, so might as well just use this here anyway. Charge. Trying to see. Uh, 
to do this here is simply because we're going to drop that here and just stick to this area all kinds of contest plan substitution duration with let's see and we could say say something like give me subscribe This guy has been created with plan just to uh, change. We just simply plan, right? Plans dot plan dot duration. Yep, that's it. Plans to plan and duration. So maybe I should solve my problem. We have just click on help. So now let's get to writing our tests. Create our test file. Now that we have all of this, that's what I find. 